Thank you very much. Thank you. It's uh, great to be down here at the new home of uh, Cambridge Modern Jazz Club. It's certainly a little bit more light <laughs> in this room than there was last time I came and played for Cambridge Modern Jazz Club. Maybe a little bit too light for jazz musicians, and I apologise if you arrived a little bit late, as I said this gig started at 8 o'clock. Uh, half seven for jazz seems uh, quite, quite early, but thank you all very much for coming out so, so early and so promptly. It's so nice to be back here. Uh, playing for you guys at the club but in a new venue. So uh, that piece was a Moaning uh, by Bobby Timms, who was the pianist in Art Blakey's group for a time. Art Blakey actually asked him to write a piece of incidental music or an interlude music, and it was the bridge that you heard there right at the end that he first composed. He then composed this sort of blues lick to it, uh, and then became one of the band's signature tunes uh, for Art Blakey and the Jazz Messengers. And Art Blakey was playing way up into the mid-1980s. Would you please welcome uh, this evening on the piano, Mr. Chris Jerome. <laughs> on the trumpet, Paul Hicks. <laughs> on the drums, George Double. <laughs> on the bass, Jose Canyon. We're going to play another piece. All the pieces tonight are on Blue Note Records. For me, Blue Note Records is the sound of that post-war generation of jazz musicians. All those great recordings made by Rudy Van Gelder, often in the early days in his parents' living room, literally in his parents' front room. And he created this amazing sound uh, for, for Blue Note. Blue Note were famous in the fact that what they did with the musicians, rather than dragging the musicians in during the day to record the music, what they did was they booked the musicians to come and play after they'd finished their nightclub gigs. So often these Blue Note sessions were held at one, two o'clock in the morning. They laid on free booze, free food, hence people who want good jazz. Um, <laughs> you know, some of you got that joke. Uh, but uh, this other piece is, again, it's one that's on Blue Note, it was on Joe Henderson's uh, first Blue Note recording. It's made famous, really, by Joe Henderson. It was actually written by the uh, trumpet player Kenny Doran. Uh, if you've ever played uh, a jazz instrument or started learning jazz improvisation, at some stage you will have played this piece. It's a beautiful piece of music, uh, and it's called Blue Bossa.
Thank you very much. Solos on that one. Paul Higgs, ladies and gentlemen. And Chris Rome on the piano. One of the one of my favourite sets of Blue Note records are this series that Thelonious Monk made for Blue Note called Genius Plays. The setting to a certain number of volumes. Uh, Chris is now going to play uh, one of those uh, Monk tracks off the album, also covered by Miles Davis later on. But uh, we're going to leave Paul and I going to leave the stage. Let these three do a bit of work. Uh, for the next bit, this is Monks. Well, you need it.
Strom on the piano. Joseph Kenny on the bass. And George Double on the drums. George Double on the drums. Now, Blue, Re Blue Note Records, their first real hit, as it were, was a version of George Gershwin's Summertime, which is often sneered upon by jazz nerds as the one you should really play over and over and over again. But you'd have a hard time sneering at this guy while he was alive, because Cindy Bechet is famous for once challenging someone to a duel or challenging to shoot them. We don't know which version of the truth it is because someone said he played a wrong chord. <laughs> to which he responded, Sidney Bechet does not play the wrong note. And if you refer to yourself in the third person, you know you've got a little bit of a narcissist pro problem. <laughs> hey, Donald J. Trump. <laughs> Interesting news from the White House, rather sad while the president's been away, uh, there's been a fire in the West Wing and the presidential library was slightly damaged. It's a real blow for Donald Trump because he hadn't re finished reading both those books yet. <laughs> there you go. So we're going to take you, transport you back to 1939 to Sidney Bechet's version of George Gershwin's Summertime. Rather apt for the evening, so just kick back and enjoy. I'll just transport you back to that summer before it all started to go slightly wrong. <laughs> 